Hi, how's everybody doing? This is your boy Reg here. Um, before I actually start this review, just let it be known. This is actually my third time retaping this review, and so I've been going through some technical difficulties on my webcam's front. So um, I'm, I was originally going to talk about, you know, doing some renouncements before this um, review. Um, first and foremost, I want to say rest in peace to Miss Diane Carroll. Um, for those who don't know who Diane Carroll is, she's a legendary actress, singer, whatever you want to call her and shit like that. She was the first black woman to win the Tony Award in 1962 and stuff like that. Um, some of her earliest roles include Carmen Jones and uh, Porgy Bess. She became like, she was um, mostly known for like her work in television. And those include like, her credits include like the show Julia, which ran from 1968 to 1971. Julia was like a very groundbreaking show because it showed like blacks in a non-stereotypical role because like Julia was like a single mom who was a nurse and stuff like that. But um, despite the show being very groundbreaking today, at the time, it was very controversial at the time. And a lot of critics, like mostly a lot of whites and even blacks too, kind of felt the show to be very unrealistic and that capturing like the black voice and stuff like that, not discussing issues like with like racism and whatnot so but these days julia is recognized as like a groundbreaking show and whatnot um i've seen a couple of episodes of julia here and there i mean i i like it and respect it it's not among like the shows i watch if i want like to laugh or something like that give me one second then um fast forward to the 70s you know she's done a few movies here and there one of my all-time favorite movies that she starred in was Claudine, what she did with James Earl Jones. Um, very dope movie that was premiered in 1974. Um, the soundtrack was actually produced by Curtis Mayfield and the song like The Makings of You from Glass Night and the Pips, which have been like covered and sampled by a lot of people. That was originally on that soundtrack. All right. Then um, once we get into the 80s and stuff, um, some of her most popular roles came from that decade too. And one of her most popular roles was um, Dominic Devereaux from the show Dynasty, the 80s um, primetime soap. Uh, I'm not really the biggest Dynasty fan, to say the least. I'm more of Dallas, but that's another story for a different day. Um, but, yeah, man, like, she definitely did a thing in the role. Like, if I catch, like, a clip from YouTube or something like that, she definitely did a thing in that role and stuff like that. And then, like, years later, 1987, um, she started being the mom of Whitley. Whitley Gilbert and shit like that. What was the character's name? Um, Marion. Marion in A Different World, which is one of my all-time favorite sitcoms of all time. Um, her scenes with Patti LaBelle, who played on Dwayne's Mom, fucking gold every time they appeared on screen together and shit like that. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Um, then fast forward into the 90s, you know, she appeared on The Five Heartbeats, which is a classic movie one of the most classic movies of all time in my personal opinion and she definitely appeared on yeah, yeah you could then um she definitely um also appeared on East Bayou and stuff and um also she was actually a breast cancer survivor too so and she actually knows stuff for rights you know with breast cancer and drug awareness and whatnot so R.I.P. to Diane Carroll. She had passed away October 4th in 2019. R.I.P. to her. Um, next person I want to say R.I.P. to was Mr. Ginger Baker, who was um, the drummer of Queen Cream, which you guys should know Cream is one of my favorite rock groups of all time, in my personal opinion. Um, so, you know, Ginger Baker, you know, he got us, he originally got his start on, um, what was the group? He originally was like a drummer from this uh, group called the Grand Bond Organization, where he had also met um, Jack Bruce and stuff. And so once that band dissolved, um, those guys, as along with um, Eric Clapton, you know, they had formed Cream. Cream definitely made like a lot of timeless songs, like Sunshine of Your Love, Strange Brew, Politician, Badge, and so on and so on and stuff like that. You know, they definitely. Next to Led Zeppelin and The Doors, they're definitely my favorite rock group of all time. Very influential. And after the dissolution of Cream in, I want to say, 1968, um, himself and Eric Clampton, um, they were working. They formed a super group of their own called Blind Faith with 
Steve Winwood of Traffic, another underrated rock group, and uh, Rick Grinch from Family. And um, they definitely came out with this album right here, the self-titled Blind Faith album. Very dope album. If you love that blues rock kind of deal, um, some of um, some of um, Ginger Baker's best drums is on this album too. So for all my Cream diehard fans, this is the album for you guys to get. It's kind of a hard to come by these days, but if you find it, it must have in your collection. So yeah, and I definitely expect a review on this one day. Uh, so yeah, so next you know it, he, he's been appearing on a couple of artists here and there and whatnot. So yeah, man, RIP to him. He died Sunday as well. So RIP to Mr. Ginger Baker. And last but not least, I want to say a special RIP to Mr. Joshua Brown. And for those of you guys who don't know who Joshua Brown is, you know, he was one of the key witnesses during the Amber Geiger trial. You know, that piece of shit cop who had um, shot her black neighbor. I want to say his name was Botham Jean and shit, you know. They said a dude was shot in the mouth, so I want to say RIP to him, a special RIP to him. So, yeah, with that being said, let's get started with the review. All right, so moving with the review, the album that I'm going to review today is Karis One's third solo album, I Got Next, released in 1997 on Jive Records. This is actually the last album that he had released for Jive Records, to be real with you guys. Um, singles albums known for are Can't Stop, Won't Stop, Step Into a World, Rapture's Delight, and Heartbeat. And the producers include Karis One, Domingo, Jesse West, Showbiz, Gordon Commissioner Gordon Williams, DJ Cypher, DJ Muggs, Edward Nappy, and surprisingly Sean Puffy Combs and Stevie J. So after the release of the self-titled album, which a lot of people said that was his best album, that next year in 1996 he had formed the Temple of Hip Hop, which was like a temple to preserve hip hop culture and stuff like that. You probably have heard him reference that in a lot of his songs. And also, you know, he was working a lot with Sh Channel Live, you know, with the Station Identification album, which I've said that was a very dope album. But by the time 96, 97 happened, you know, hip hop was becoming like a very popular form of music and it was becoming really marketable. So I think like with this album, he had wanted to preserve the hip hop culture and shit like that. But at the same time, he wasn't afraid to like embrace the commercialism of some sort, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, that's why was, this, this looks like he's like saying like pass me a basketball and stuff like that. So yeah, I found that to be pretty dope. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I was gonna play the album for you guys, but I've been having like a lot of te technical difficulties with this video. This is actually the third time I'm doing the video. So I, I'm trying to do this video before I get to work and stuff like that. And so the guest appearances include Angie Martinez, Redman, Lamont Fields, Mike Vandales, Anthony Mills, G. Simone, and Puff Daddy. All right, let's get this started. Track number one, the first quarter commentary. Um, just let it be known, I don't really care too much for the skits, so I'm just going to glide through them to be real with you guys. Um, it wasn't me really saying that much with the skits anyway and stuff, so yeah. Then track number two, the free throw second quarter and stuff like that. Um, didn't really care for that. Then track number three, we got is the MC. Very dope song. One thing, a little trivia, that song was actually supposed to have been on the self-titled album, which I kind of see it, but at the same time, it kind of fits this album too and shit. Yeah, this is really one of the strongest tracks off this album. I think now it's really a safe thing to say that this album pretty much has some of the best Karis One songs, and then it has some of the worst Karis One songs, to be real with you. So I'm just gonna let that be known for you guys right now. But yeah, the MC, definitely a very strong song. Um, just a braggadocious song about, you know, what it means to be an MC and shit like that. Very dope track. Track number four, I Got Next slash Never Had a Gun. Um, pretty straight song, not really the biggest fan of that song and shit like that. I'm more of a fan of the Never Had a Gun, nor more for like the stripped down beat and shit like that. But he's just going off on that fucking track and stuff. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Next track we got is Heartbeat featuring Redman and Angie Martinez. Never a fan of Angie Martinez rapping. I'm just gonna let that be known for you guys right now. Yeah, man. Ah, I just never thought she was that dope rapper. Not even Karis when a Redman can save a song because I definitely had a lot of problems with the beat as well too. I felt like you know the beat was trying to go for that radio airplay because like what I mentioned with the boot camp click for the people of you how a lot of East Coast cats like to flip like a lot of old school hip hop tracks and make it to like songs of their own and shit like that, which it can work at times, but at times it can't work. 
And so it uses the Treacherous 3 sample and shit like that, the Feel the Heartbeat sample, which I like Treacherous 3, but not in that song. Another song I didn't really care for. This might be a surprise to some people. Step into a world, Rapture's Delight. Never, I mean, at one point I did like this song, it was cool, but then it got overplayed a lot. Every time I hear that, step into a world, I'd be like, oh my god, and shit. Like these days it's more remembered as like one of his signature songs with good reason too and shit like that. Um, yeah man, it just, you know, pretty much like putting on the, you know, the Temple of Hip Hop in place and shit like that. It uses the um, Blondie Rapture sample and it kind of works here because of the fact that, you know, Rapture, one of the first hip hop songs where um, there was rapping involved, like the first rock, rock slash pop songs I should say. so. Yeah, and he did a remix for Puff Daddy too, but that's another story later on in this album. Track number seven, A Friend. Love this track. This is actually my favorite Karis One song of all time. And it was produced by Showbiz 2 and shit like that, so I felt like that was pretty dope. Um, it's just talking about the importance of having a good people around your corner, having a friend and whatnot. Yeah, very dope. I very love this song. Very dope song and shit. Um... Yeah, what it is about this song. Yeah, man, very dope song and whatnot. I like the line where he says, My man, I be dissing in my freestyle rhyme, getting getting G's around the world. I can trust you with my girl, my man. We chilling at the gym, what's the plan? I'm not a yes man, and none of my friends are yes men or women. I'm driving, I see my peeps, you'll get in. Where you fit in, true friends are quick to sit in. The beginning of all trouble, when your bankroll doubles. Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. Still, I got my own space like Hubble. Like, fucking love that line and shit like that. Like, that's why I said we need more friends these days like Fred and Barney, except for Trump and Cohen and shit like that. But, <laughs> That's another story for a different day. But yeah, A Friend, definitely a very dope song. Love that song. Track number eight, Hip Hop featuring Thor L. Um, that's a pretty solid song and shit like that. Yeah, track number nine and ten, Halftime, and a third quarter, The Commentary, which was Interludes I didn't really care for. However, the Interlude Classics, excuse me, the Interlude Classics was pretty much like, and anyway, it kind of like mashes classic songs together. Like, like Karis One Attacks off the uh, Return of the Boom Bap album. It's pretty much this one, but with like a twist to it. You know what I'm saying? Track number 12, Blowy featuring Redman. Um, Redman's only on the chorus. Oh, and by the way, with a friend, dope usage of the Iron Butterfly sample as well, too. Yeah, Blowy, very dope song. I love this track right here. Karis One just going in. And Showbiz again produced this track, too. I like the line where he says, I'm poisoned like BBD, the plot thickens when I be hitting, and lyric licking, flipping, and you mixing over the skipping, and cable clipping so sickening, even though some people ate a minute, through the system I be kicking, and tipping scale I pay tuition, not fail, drink water, not ale, MC him hits right on the nail, like, fucking dope track, I love that shit right there, um, check number 13, Real Hip Hop Part 2, um, very solid song as well, track number 14, Come to the Party, now, when I first heard this song, Come to the Party, I was not kind of indifferent because it was a very like different laid back song from Karis One. But then once you really listen to the track, when he means by Come to the Party, he's talking about how hip hop was originated in the streets. But at the same time, you have like the commercialism coming to hip hop and stuff like that. Hence the title, Come to the Party. Very dope song. I love like the um, boom bapish kind of beat that this album, this song has and shit. Not like boom bap, like a block party-ish kind of beat. Yeah, very dope track. Um, and I think Karis One produced that track, that track Come to the Party too. Yeah, he produced that one. Can't Stop, Won't Stop, this next track produced by DJ Muggs. Very dope track as well. Um, Muggs and Karis One definitely should have done more. That's the thing about Karis One, he doesn't get the props when he comes to like, him spinning over West Coast trash because I definitely loved his verse on the Dr. Dre track on East Coast, West Coast Killers from the Dr. Dre Presents the Aftermath album, which was a very dope album, to be real with you, a very underrated. Just too much fucking R&B on that shit. But yeah, with Can't Stop, Won't Stop, it's pretty much a storytelling track about how this drug dealer is on the run and shit like that after getting some bad business and shit like that. So yeah, one of his best storytelling tracks too. 
Track number 16, um, Over Your Head. Very cool track, like a reggae kind of track and shit like that. Track number 17, Just to Prove a Point. <sighs> Not a fan of this track. Just let it be known. He goes for that like rock kind of track. And you know, I don't, I, I don't mind rap rock because it can work well with like people like Run DMC, Beastie Boys. But Karis One does not work well because it kind of him adapting to that like male and Manson, Nine Inch Nails kind of sound, which did not really work well for him. And so then we have fourth quarter free throws, and then next thing, last thing, you know, we have Step Into a World remix, We're featuring Puff Daddy. Not a fan of the remix. Like you have Karis One, one of the most respectful MCs that stood up against you know hip hop, teaming up with a guy that's making hip hop marketable and shit. I don't know. Whose decision for was Karis One or Jives, but it kind of makes sense because you know Bad Boy Records at that time was putting out some heat, you know, like Live After Death, Harlem World, No Way Out, and so on and so on. But yeah, not a fan of the remix. And yeah, that's all the time I have. Um, excuse me if this is kind of going. I sped it through because this is like my third time doing it, and I'm trying to hurry up so I can get ready to go to work and shit. But to put it in a nutshell, this album is oh, it's a very solid album. It has some of his best songs and conceptual wise, but at the same time, some of the songs, like he's trying to like go off like a reaching of certain songs and stuff too. And especially with the Puff Daddy influence on this album, but yeah, man. And I wouldn't really put this next to this self titled album, but at the same time, I feel like it's a very dope album that deserves a lot of pra praise when it comes to his fan base. And yeah, this is his last album in Job Records. This is Karis one I got next. Give this album a chance, it's not as bad as many people make it out to be. And believe it or not, it's actually his best selling album too. And a lot of that has to do with stepping to a world. So, this is Karis One with um, I Got Next, 1997. Make sure y'all click that subscribe button. Peace.